Thanks for waiting. Welcome to the Museum of History of Science. Um, welcome to Geek Out. Uh, my name's Scott. I work here as Public Engagement Officer. This experiment that's unfolding before you is, uh, well, it's the vision of Matt Westcott, who, who, who I'll introduce properly in a moment. But we had an exhibition here which closed at the beginning of November called Geek is Good, which had various instruments from across the centuries that we, we are presenting as the geek sort of items of their day, if you like. And one section of that exhibition was about 1980s computing. We had some Sinclair machines and some BBC micros. So we thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to have a day using those machines to play retro games, the kind of games that I grew up playing, um, and, and have them in a museum and have everyone come and play. So I suggested this to Matt, who is a, a lord of the spectrum, and he said, yeah, yeah, that would be great, let's do that. And he said, I'd also like to um, fulfill a challenge, and he's going to tell me about that challenge, and that is to turn these a bunch of wires and, and eight-bit computers into an orchestra. So Matt's going to tell me a little bit about how that came about, and then we're going to see if it works. Matt Westcott. So, yeah, thanks all for coming and for, for waiting, and uh, also thanks to Scott and Stephen for uh, sort of letting me indulge in uh, this uh, obsession, and uh, also to the people who've uh, generously supplied the, uh, the hardware, the spectrum, and the TVs we used earlier. So it's um, to Ovada, and especially to you for carting all of this. Uh, like, Okay, yeah, so, uh, so thanks to uh, Avada and especially to Hugh who uh, carted the, um, the, all the, the tellies around in uh, sort of a very fraught journey across Oxford uh, last night. And uh, also to the, the people who supply Spectrums, uh, Andy Lemon, Matthew Thorne, Jenny List, Gary Dunn, Pete Andrew, Andrew Katz. And also to the to people who potentially supplied the hardware, but um, due to a combination of logistics, sickness, or that the horror of booting up your spectrum to find it isn't actually working anymore. Uh, Dan Barber, Edward Kay, and Charlie Robson. And also to, to our volunteers who've been sort of assisting, both uh, in an official capacity and in a being dragged in unawares capacity. So yeah, as, uh, as Scott said, I'm here to attempt a 30-year-old challenge. Uh, it's uh, originated uh, in the uh, Spectrum Programming Manual, which is uh, the Possibly one of the greatest books of all time yeah. <laughs> on this list of uh, top literature. But I think it's kick-started the computing industry in this country, it got people into programming in basic at first, and then moving on to bigger and better things. So chapter 19 of the, uh, of the Spectrum Manual introduced the beep command, and um, which just lets you play like a single note on um, on the the spectrum uh, on the spectrum's built-in loudspeaker, and we think that this chapter, well, the, the the manual was written by Stephen Vickers, who is responsible for the software um, that, uh, that runs Spectrum Basic, and we think that the, this chapter was probably contributed by his uh, his sister Penny Vickers, who's uh, uh, currently a member of the BBC Singers. Because you can you can so see in this chapter the sort of music geek influences. It's saying things like, if you, you know, this, the spectrum only has a single leg speaker, so it can only play one note at once. If you want any harmonies, you have to sing them yourself. <laughs> and uh, I think it's in that sort of spirit of, uh, of uh, sense of humour that at the end of the chapter it had this exercise that said. Um, well, well the, the chapter itself, it gave an example with a couple of bars beeped out of uh, um, Malmö's first symphony, the funeral march from that. Uh, so, and it's the sort of program that you take 10, 15 minutes to type in just to get this 30 seconds of audio. And at the end of the chapter, it had an exercise saying, complete the program so that it plays not just the, the funeral march, but the entirety of Malmö's first symphony. <laughs> so. That's um, kind of the thing we're trying to do today. I have to sort of confess at this point, um, for anyone who is hoping for the full um, sort of one hour and ten minute performance, we will only be playing one of the movements of it, the movement of ten minutes or much. I think the novelty might probably have worn off after an hour and ten minutes, but, uh, but also hopefully if I can sort of get it working in time, we're playing a, a, a more familiar uh, bit of music. Um, so, uh, a bit of background on how it all works. Uh, so, we've, uh, so we're 
addressing this challenge with um, some very 21st century technology. Um, Dylan here uh, developed the uh, SpectraNet, the uh, um, Spectrum Ethernet interface, that lets you connect up your spectrum to the, uh, to, to, to the internet, potentially. And in fact, this isn't the first bit of Spectrum history that we've made together in Oxford, because uh, a few years back when he was bringing he was showing off the uh, prototype of this interface, uh, we were at a Spectrum meetup in the Gloucester Arms, and we made the decision there to try and send the first ever tweet from the ZX Spectrum. <laughs> and, uh, so, and so that happened, we celebrated afterwards with uh, champagne, and uh, hopefully we'll have cause to celebrate uh, today as well. So we're, here we're using the Spectra Nets, um, they're all networked together in what we think might be the sort of, largest collection of network spectrums in history. <laughs> the, uh, there, there was a, an interface that uh, you could get back in the day that would supposedly connect up to 64, I don't think anyone actually did that. Uh, so those, those are all connected up to this network and acting as the conductor today is the, this uh, Raspberry Pi here. So that's just um, that's going to be sending out uh, sort of time signals uh, every 50th of a second. The music data is actually stored on the spectrums themselves, um, and uh, so I think that's just about covers everything. So, um, so, so we've been to quite a lot. As you've seen, it's been there's been quite a lot of uh, drama of having to frantically re reboot things. So pretty much, so <laughs> that's assuming the interfaces even hold out, so we don't get. Yeah, fall victim to the dreaded ram pack wobble. Uh, it's, a, it's a little nudge would uh, destroy the whole thing. So, um, so let's uh, fingers crossed then, and we'll uh, give this a go. Okay. Yes.